You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. This is the case of Phillips versus Gibbs. Thank you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have the case of Phillips v. Gibbs. Miss Phillips, you are suing your ex-boyfriend for $1,000 in child care expenses you claim he has ignored since denying that he is the father of your two-month-old daughter, Jordan, whom he refuses to meet. Today, you have petitioned the court for a paternity test to prove he is the father and are looking to recover your $1,000 uh, child care expenses. Mr. Gibbs, you claim that Ms. Phillips did not live up to your standards and has a long history of sexual promiscuity. You believe you are not the father of her baby and therefore say you owe her nothing. Now, Ms. Phillips, tell me about your relationship with the defendant. Well, Your Honor, I thought this was going to be the best situation. I thought that he was actually the one for me. You know, and I think it started for me when, you know, he went to this convention, a spiritual convention, and he came home that night. He was just like, you got to go. So okay, I... wait. <laughs> I just must stop you. You're in a relationship. Yes. He's the one for me. That's how I felt. <laughs> then he goes to a spiritual convention. Yes. And comes home and tells you to get out. Yeah, he told me he had to go because he was working on himself or whatever. So I was like, well, oh. it's late. You know, can I just wait till the morning and just go to my grandmother's house? Cause, you know, it was late. It's middle of the night. <laughs> yes, it was like mm. 12, 1, 2, maybe. So he takes me to a hotel. Mm. I'm in the car crying, boo-hoo, and I'm like, why? You know, why? He was like, he can't do this no more. He got he to gotta do right. So I was like, OK. OK, Mr. Gibbs, I have to ask you, mm -hmm. is this true? Did oh. you go home after the spiritual convention and put Miss Phillips out and take her to a hotel? A lot of stuff led up to this event. Okay. Okay. First of Fill all, me in. The, the first thing that happened was we went to a Christmas party that her friend was throwing. Um, she's getting uh, approached by a guy I guess they know is a part of the family. He um, kind of just ignores that I'm even there. I'm asking her, I said, hey, you going with me or not? No, uh-uh. And so she's you shaking stay... her head yes. Yeah, so she want to stay here with the, with the guy that, we just, that, we, that I just got into an altercation with. Then the next event, we get to... Let me stop at that event, because I need to understand mm -hmm. from Miss Phillips now, why That's is not... it if you came to the party with him and you guys were together when I, there was an altercation, I... why didn't you leave with him? The only reason why I didn't leave with him, because he, the dude was still hot. I've been around that family for years, mm -hmm. and I know how they work. So what I was doing, I was just trying to, you know, kind of keep it down, because they was ready to go to the house. So out of protection for him, you were just I... trying to exactly. defuse it. Exactly. And say, I'm just going to stay. Exactly. After that, it follows up. I go to Miami with a friend of mine. Two days later, I get a call from a mutual friend that says she was involved in an event. I called you and told her, you. My mutual I friend told me you. first. They left and went to um, a party where um, I know what type of girl she is. She, she's a very promiscuous girl, put it like that, herself. So yes. when she gets there, she's already in the car. She tells me Mahogany didn't even want to get into the car. Because she's seen right her. I got right in the car and I seen her. I even say hey to her. She didn't say hey to me. In that situation, yes, I, I was. Originally, she at told that... me that was her brother's, her oh. real fleshly brother. Yeah, I asked I her told several him times. All this. This is what I told him. Mr. Gibbs, you say that Miss Phillips admitted to cheating. Yes, yeah, she, I did. She, yeah, she told me that. But when I first got back, she told me that she didn't. Nothing happened. I was with my brothers. That he story didn't. stayed for about a month and a half until finally she broke out and said, "Yeah, I did cheat, but it wasn't with who." I was with that night. So the trust is going out the window, but you're still with her? I'm still with her. Then, another situation where I was with, uh, talking to a, a friend of mine outside of, during a party, and he was telling me, um, yeah, uh, I was with this one girl, man. We was, you know, we was in the back seat. We doing it. And all of a sudden, um, a, a guy in a black car pulls up. And he was like, um, I said, I said, the black car pulls up. He said, yeah, she told me to go ahead and let's get out because He's crazy. It's my boyfriend. He's crazy. I said, did the black car look like this one? And he was like... Yeah, that was yeah. a friend of mine. And we were talking in front of my house when he came. And But we but went together. Didn't this we person tell together. you that she did have sex with him? Yes. And we weren't, to, we weren't even together. And he explained I did have in sex details. with him now. Okay, but wait we a minute. together then. And I felt bad about it. I told him I felt bad. I shouldn't have did that. I didn't even, I didn't even feel good about it at all. But when I go through his stuff, the bag that he took to Miami, I see condoms in the open, and they open and one missing. Had the relationship ever been positive? 
Yeah, it's been for good. You. Yeah, it's been good. A lot of times, like, because it's been time that we actually did things together. I mean, we acted like a family. He's, he had his two girls. I had my boy. We was, you know, I was, we was doing things we were supposed to do in a relationship. We just had a real relationship. It just, when he get in that mind frame where he assuming that something happened, it turns sour. Which I understand, because if you cheat once, then you gonna, you think he gonna think you always cheating. But then that's why I kept myself around him. There was so times... So he wouldn't think there that was... something was wrong. And that's what I did. I even had problems with my, my people. My, my grandmother was getting mad because I always was running over there to him. And then when he does it, it's like out of character, I'm worthless. You know, I'm the whore, the biggest whore, a, a slut. I'm everything, but yet I'm here doing oh. everything I need to do that you want me to do. But at the same time, I'm calling, where you at? Oh, she'll come up with this line or some, some story where she had been at with her friend's house. But when I get over there, as soon as we, we could be sitting there for five, ten minutes, a phone call pop up. Hey, is Mahogany there? And that's true. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. In your statement to the court, you also talked about text messages. I had went to jail for about two months. And while I got, when I got back out, the first thing I, I'm, I'm going to do is go through your phone. Multiple dudes are in there making flagrant dudes, text messages. Um, oh, I'm horny for you, daddy, and all this other kind of and stuff. And that's a lie. We, yeah. It wasn't sexual. Multiple text messages from and multiple dude, different guys. And then five, you... five different numbers okay, at least. But yet, I even called a couple of them back, and I'm like, hey. He got girls come to see him in so, jail. So thus far in this story, I I'm hearing that, Mr. Gibbs, you were a good man in this relationship. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say that I, I was just being 100% um, in the right because, oh, okay. because we was doing tit for tat, a lot of it. Miss Phillips, you said you thought he was the one for you. Yes, you really I did. did. And did you come to find out that you were the only one for him? No, it isn't. I know it's not. I knew that wasn't the case. Did he, he have other women? When I first met him, whatever, and we was getting into our relationship, he told me that he had been married before. My wife at the time was living in Mississippi. We had been legally separated for almost two years at that well, point. Well, I have a saying, a man is married until he is divorced. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. Still married. And that's when I should have known that the relationship but was But at some point, progress. you found out. Yes. Two weeks later, and but I you still, continued. But, and Three I years, still continued. We four yes, years now. I did, because I, by then, I felt like I was stuck. I was young, and I felt like I was stuck. Shoot, he ain't with her, so I'm going to stay with her. That's to Stay with him. That's how I felt. What I'm gathering is that truth. this relationship was messy. Yes, ma'am. Despite this messiness, you end up pregnant. Yes. The question up is, is it mine? And I'm like, okay, you feel like it's not yours? How? We, we, we haven't unprotected sex since we've been talking. But here's the reason why <laughs> I felt like that. The situation uh, was is when we, when I had just moved into a new apartment, um, we didn't. We had just gotten them to blow up because it was either her friend had had a birthday party, and they go out on the night on the town. I go by her house. She's not there. I'm knocking on the window. She's not there. And there's been multiple times where I go by there. She say she's there. She's gone. She didn't left. She didn't left her kid or whatever. Gone. Two weeks after I Joking moved into my apartment, I did, she she was nowhere near to be to be found. When she get find out that she's pregnant, and then she's telling me all these mixed dates. She go to the, she go to the doctor. She's oh I'm 12 weeks. Oh oh I'm 16 weeks. And these are within two or three days. Okay, so when I'm so when like so when I counted back of June, so when I counted when back I I'm like out, that that's around the time when and that's the night when he was missing when she was missing which made you doubt her so it made me doubt her yeah obviously okay but then that was the night I called up my friend I did I sure did call my friend because my friend would tell me that I am worth something that I'm not worthless so that's what I did. Okay. So this is a male friend? Yes, it is. And you had him tell you yeah, he was worth him, something. And I kept putting him off and kept putting him off because I wanted to, I, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. No. You that telling me that you... Friend you that telling me, about. You telling me that night, yeah, because he See? in the military, There so. you go. You had sex with the man. You're that saying day. you did. Yeah, So do you day. understand from Mr. Gibbs' perspective why there's doubt? Who, who, who gets pregnant by a man that you claim is your pre that you pregnant real? by? You go and take off 800 miles away. You go to Tampa. You down there. You, you done left me up here high and dry. You're not worried about me. I'm home. calling. I'm trying to, I'm trying to maintain a long-distance relationship. So I but left. How, much, how much can I do this when I'm not at doctor's appointments? I'm, I'm not there doing the pregnancy of this child. I'm not, I mean, the labor of this child. I'm, I'm not there. I'm absent. But even still, when she came back for her birthday, I took her out. She came back to visit for another reason. She ain't come down to visit for me. She came down to visit for another reason. So she left. She left. During that time, you kept in contact, but you didn't make the effort to go down to see her. 
No, because at the time, I, 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 I run my own I business. Need all the, I need and all I run my own business and I work. And pregnant. I work. Yeah, I was pregnant. Doing she travel. did the traveling via her mother or family. But I was doing the okay. traveling. So, based upon this, Mr. Gibbs, you're convinced you're not the father. I just say I have good, reasonable doubt that there is, that there is, that okay. I'm not the father. Now, I'd like to bring up your witness, please. Please state your name, ma'am. Raven Gibbs. And you are Mr. Gibbs' sister, yes, am I correct? Yes, that's correct. Tell me what you have to add to this situation that can help the court understand what's going on. Okay, well, first of all, it's just too much between the both of them, back and forth. This has been going on for years. And when my brother first told me that she was pregnant and that she did have a child, I thought it was strange that she left and went to Tampa because I felt like, okay, well, if it is his baby, you're not just keeping it away from him, but you're keeping it away from the rest of his family, too. Because if it is his daughter, then she's our family, too. So I thought it was kind of strange that she would just go to Tampa while she was pregnant. I don't, I don't mean, like, towards the end or the beginning. I mean, like, right in the middle. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know anything about when she was due or anything. And then all she would do was send pictures to him and then just talk about child support is what he was telling me. So I'm like, well, how can you do all that and you don't even have a paternity test because they both were seeing other people. She was seeing other people and he was seeing other people. And he told me around the time that the baby was conceived or when she found out she was pregnant, it didn't add up because she was seeing other people and they weren't really together like that. If you wanted him to be a part of the pregnancy, why leave in the first place while you're pregnant? If you, I, I, I want to understand that. I couldn't do it no more, Your Honor. The All this arguing. drama he was taking me through, I was pregnant. I wasn't trying to be the it pregnant. It was stressing you out. Yes, I wasn't trying to be stressed out. I was not trying to be stressed out by him. And he know why, because he first came off denying it. Then we get into argument after argument about, about the situation. I had to go get Is me it? some rest. I was coming back, but I had felt like I needed to go for this pregnancy to get me some rest. Why do you think she left? I'm, I'm still trying to figure that one out. But she, when she left, I mean, she didn't give no, no real definitive reason why she's leaving. She's saying, oh, I can't take it no more, but look, look what we've been going through for the past four, three years of chaos. And I wasn't so, pregnant so then. So you're going to get pregnant, but then now you take off I right, when, right when things then. are getting critical. And right did when your brother serious. tell you that Ms. Phillips had left to go to, go mm -hmm. to Florida? And what did you think? I thought it was strange because, I mean, if I was pregnant by someone and I wanted, to, wanted that person to step up, and even if I'm, not ha I'm having problems with that person, I'm going to think about my child. I'm going to think about the fact that that's the father. So I'm going to try to, like, at least stay around and see where he can step in. We don't have to be together. We don't have to talk. I still can get my rest and my breaks from arguments. I thought it was strange because if it was just being a woman, if I had a child and I was in that situation, I wouldn't just leave while I'm pregnant because that's just not natural to me. Well, the baby comes first to me. And my baby's health is important to me. If I'm stressed out, of course, I mean, it's anything that can happen when you're pregnant. If you got a child, you will know that when you're pregnant, you can't be stressed. But even after the baby was here and she would come to Pensacola, mm -hmm. she still was, like, on the DL about it. So she still, you know what I'm saying, it still does not add up. Well, okay, you, did you, I write you? you? Yeah, you wrote me several times. We wrote back and forth. Pensacola. We wrote back and forth all the time. <laughs> but even even after after the baby was born, she goes and says she's on the she's on Facebook with other friends telling them that okay, the baby's not mine. She's telling I her friends that they're not that. mine. I never okay. said that. You can't find out one statement to the court. You also said that some friends said that she told them that That's the what I'm baby was. She told her friends that they that they weren't oh that it wasn't God. mine. Oh my God, that's the biggest lie I've heard today. Nobody will ever believe that that baby ain't his because they said, how in the world did he even deny her when they, every time you see him, it's me or me, him. They, they didn't even know that we had broken up. Everybody I think shocked. the only thing at this point it's that we test. have established is that this relationship was doomed from the start. Thank yes. you. I feel like um, that's true. Thank you, Ms. Gibbs, for your testimony. You may have a seat. I can't believe it, but I think I might be speechless. I... <laughs> I'm looking for the light here. There when did no either of you treat this relationship as something of value or something to respect or be trustful? You were married, you were cheating, and you were tit for tat, and you break up, and then you get back together, and then potentially create a child and still arguing about it. And the only thing this court cares about is that child. I think yes. it's time for yes. us to reveal the results because I think we need to know. Are mm -hmm. you ready? Yes. Absolutely. All right. Jerome, if I may. Oh! Yeah, that's Jordan. Now, Mr. Gibbs, you have never, ever met the baby, right? No, ma'am.
Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. Are we ready? Yes. <laughs> These results as prepared by DNA Diagnostics reads... When it comes to two-month-old baby Jordan, Mr. Gibbs, this court has determined that you are her father. That's good. How do you feel? I'm completely fine with that. It never was a point All where I day. felt like I didn't All want. Day. Well, I mean, we got we got All the determination, day. and I can move on. And like be a I would be that nasty to not know who my baby dad is. Ugh, I can't deal. I can't. Express That's the court what you feel. That's embarrassing when your friends come by. Oh yeah, I talked to Sharon, and he's like, you know, uh, that ain't my baby. I gotta see that in black and white. Like seriously. I never Man, said it wasn't my baby. Never. I never said it wasn't my baby. Oh, my God. I always... But I did say, look, I just need to see verification. I got it. For this reason, because it's been determined that, Mr. Gibbs, you are baby Jordan's father, I am going to award plaintiff the $1,000 in back child care fees <laughs> because it is your responsibility to help with the fees and the costs associated with the birth and care of baby Jordan up until this time and going forward. Absolutely. Now, Auntie, I don't know if you borderline sad or disappointed, <laughs> but then you you got the cutest little niece in the world, so I don't know how you could I be I mean, sad. I'm glad that she's an addition to the family. As far as her being another extension, then I'm happy for that. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, Mr. Gibbs, the best question I have to ask you for today is, are you ready to meet your beautiful baby girl in my chambers? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I will meet you there. Court is adjourned. Yeah. Ready to bring in baby Jordan. And all dressed up for daddy. <laughs> Your baby. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to remember that the past can only be the past if you let it stay there. And like I said, there's nothing in the world more important than your children. And you can do it for them.